Hello Internet. Today we have a 3060 Twin Edge from Zotac, owner of which had said, it artifacts. Instead of plugging it in and confirming the issue, I want to first take it apart and have a look. And it looks like in order to take it apart we need to remove these three screws. And it opens. These pads here are not original. Hopefully they were not the reason why this card had memory problems. In either case, we'll find out sooner or later. This card has a backplate, which is great. Let's remove it and see if it provides any benefit. Nope, it does not. Other than protecting the board and trapping the heat, it does absolutely nothing. I really wish it had pads here, but it's Zotac. What did you expect? Okay, enough of non-constructive criticism, and let's get back to work and get some measurements. 12 volt kilo ohms, 3.3 kilo ohms, 1.8 volt, 1 kilo ohm. This one here is 12 volt, same as before. PEX, 16 ohms, 5 volt coil with 20 plus kilo ohms. And we have two memory phases, both are 40 ohms, which may seem low, but this is Samsung memory, so it's normal. Nothing interesting on the back. So let's check the first data output lines at the PCI slot, third and fourth pin, to the right from the notch. Data in on the back is measured after the capacitors that go to pads 5 and 6 on the left of the notch. Reference clock, second and third pads, looking good. And PEX reset with leads reversed is also looking good. Okay, let's power it on and see how many amps it will draw without any load. Some cards draw no amps without external power cables, so let's add that and try again. With that there, we have one amp, which is a healthy number. Next, for your entertainment, I will switch to the riser so we can both observe and make notes of voltages present on this card. 1.8 present, 12 volt present, PEX present, 5 volt present, 1.36 volt on memory and 0.75 on the core. Ok, let's plug this card into the motherboard and see if we get a picture. It looks like we have a picture, but for whatever reason I can't get my test to work, so I'll have to switch to a T-server. Which really sucks because I have to put the heatsink in order to run it. And when I did, I got this error saying that the bank C0 has errors. Okay, so let's figure out which one of the memory chips is C0. First, we have to remove this plastic frame so that we can see a small error on the corner there. Now let's turn the card so that the arrow is pointing to the top left. And then we simply pointing down the opposite corner. And we count A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0. Now that we know this chip is bad, I will give it an X of death and order a new one, which will take a month to receive. And I'll see you in a month. Okay, Chinese government has finally allowed this chip to arrive in our country, so let's see. Looks brand spanking new to me. Exactly what the customer wanted, so let's get this guy replaced already, shall we?
card cool down. I'll do a little bit of cleaning so it looks good. And then we double check for the resistances, which at this moment is reading even lower than before, but that's only because the card is still a little bit warm. Then I partially assembled the card and ran the memory test one more time. Test was completed, no errors were found, and that's great news. Then I proceeded with the assembly, and when I was almost done, I realized that I had to install the backplate first, so I had to reopen it again. That's what happens when the card sits on the shelf for over a month, and you don't remember how it was disassembled. Fortunately for me, card came with good reusable pads, but the thermal paste still had to be reapplied. This is 100% my fault, but if you like to cover my expense, hit the like button. Once I put it into Windows, drivers were automatically installed and the device manager shows no problems with the card. I ran Firmark and OCCT for a few minutes and noticed nothing wrong. Temperatures were looking surprisingly good. And then I ran the valley. Look at the board power draw, around 100 watts. Firmark was drawing 150 watts. In case you were wondering why guys like me use Firmark, that's why. If Firmark doesn't crash your card, nothing will. Okay, so all seemed well until I started superimposition. And that's where I noticed a very bad jerk. I almost thought that this card had a heat related problem, but after rebooting the computer and running the same test, everything was as smooth as butter. Dodge the bullet there. Anyway, it was time to shut down told this card goodbye and sent it back to its owner with the old chip to serve as a reminder that long time ago, in a galaxy far far away, some random guy named Tony fixed this card and became a millionaire. That's it for you today, please give this video a like or dislike, whichever you think I earned, and subscribe for more, I'll see you later, goodbye.